Steins Gate Zero is finished airing and oh my goodness was it one heck of a season. Just like Steins Gate, Steins Gate Zero goes all over the place with its timey-wimey stuff. Even if you've decided to binge the show or you watched it while it was airing, we can all agree that at times the time travel stuff and the overall plot got pretty confusing. So in this video, I'll quickly cover everything that happened in Steins Gate Zero. Side note, if you don't remember what happened in Steins Gate, I suggest you check out my video summarizing the entire season before watching this one. Anyways, let's get straight into it. Okabe has chosen to stay in the world line where Kirisu is dead, claiming no matter what he does, he cannot make it to Steins Gate. And if you don't know, Steins Gate is the theoretical world line where Kirisu and Mayuri live, and World War 3 does not take place. Okabe puts aside his mad scientist facade, and for the past six months, Suzaha has been pretending to be Daru's sister in order to keep her identity secret from her future mother Yuki. Okabe is heavily traumatized from changing world lines, thus he refuses to help Suzaha go back in time to change the future. Later on, Okabe attends a seminar presented by Leskinen and his assistant Maho. During the seminar, they both introduce an artificial intelligence program which is built upon Kurisu's consciousness before she died. Maho demonstrates the Amadeus... Amadeus? Amadeus. Amadeus program by running an AI of herself which was implanted memories of her from four days prior. This proves that Amadeus is capable of self-awareness and is able to make its own decisions. After the seminar, Okabe and Maho chat for a little while, leading to Okabe to reveal that he was Kurisu's friend. Maho then invites Okabe to have a chat with the Kurisu Amadeus AI, which has a version of Kurisu's memories embedded into it eight months prior to Kurisu's death. Leskinen and Maho allow Okabe to be a tester for Amadeus, and as a result, Maho installs the Amadeus app onto his phone, thus allowing Okabe to talk to Amadeus. Mayuri holds a Christmas party for everyone at the lab. While everyone is partying in the lab, Okabe has a really cute conversation on the roof with Amadeus, but Maho interrupts the conversation, reminding Okabe that the real Kurisu is dead. Then Okabe's PTSD kicks in, giving Okabe a vision of a world line stricken by war. Okabe concludes the vision occurred due to his reading Steiner ability. Suzuha explains to Daru that when she travels back in time to the present, she brought along a future Mayuri's adopted daughter named Kagari, but was separated from her in 19. 1998. Luca calls up requesting to meet up with Okabe, and as Okabe hangs up the phone, Moaka turns up at the door. It's revealed that Moaka works as an editorial writer in this world line, and has been hired by Daru to find Kagari. However, Moaka informs Daru, Suzuha, and Okabe that a group of men and a foreigner have also been searching for Kagari as well. Later, Maho confronts Okabe, telling him she knows he's been ignoring Amadeus' calls, suggesting he give up being a tester for the Amadeus program. Luca arrives at the lab with a girl suffering from amnesia. The only link to anything from her past is an old Upa. Mayuri and Suzuha arrive at the lab and the girl collapses as soon as she sees Mayuri, and Suzuha recognizes the girl as a grown-up Kagari. Mayuri, being the kind little nug she is, accepts Kagari's daughter-like actions towards her, and the two become exceedingly close. Okabe gets Moaka to continue to search for the people who were looking for Kagari in the first place. While the lab members celebrate New Year's at the lab, Amadeus calls Okabe, revealing herself to everyone in the room, but quickly disappears just before a group of armed men break into the lab. The armed men attempt to take Kakadi, but flee almost immediately after Daddy Braun enters the lab to save the day with his sexy, ripped, bulging muscles. Anyways, anyways, proving that the group which just attacked were not the same people who attacked the lab members back in the OG Steins Gate. Okabe convinces Mr. Bron to help keep Kagari safe, and Suzuha and Kagari begin to work at Mr. Bron's store. Okabe receives a static call from Amadeus, asking for help, but before he can respond, Okabe experiences his reading Steiner ability once again, which leads him to change to an alpha world line where Kurisu is alive, but Mayuri is dead. Okabe is stunned to see Kurisu alive, and later roams around Akihabara for a while, meeting up with Ferris, Luka, and Daru. Kurisu confronts Okabe, telling him she's figured out he's from another world line, and that she has actually rebuilt the phone wave in this world line. Kurisu manages to convince Okabe to go back to his world line by taking him to Mayuri's grave. Kurisu tells Okabe not to interact with Amadeus too much because it could negatively affect his world line. Alright, now let's take some time to appreciate how cool this next bit is. Kurisu and Okabe kiss, and it's adorable like always, but what's even more important is the D-mail which is sent in order to get Okabe back to his world line. Remember in episode 22 of Steins Gate, where Okabe is about to delete all traces of the lab members' activities from CERN's computers, and just as he presses enter on the keyboard, Kurisu runs into the lab, about to say I love you, just as Okabe changes world lines. 
Well, she actually arrives at the lab in time in this current world line, resulting in Okabe not deleting CERN's data, thus leading to Mayuri's death. But due to the demal just sent, her arrival is delayed, resulting in Okabe changing world lines, thus bringing us back to the really depressing beta world line where Kurisu is dead and World War 3 is destined to happen. Okabe wakes up in the beta world line, hospitalized, with Fubuki, due to them both suddenly fainting, presumably from the sudden world line change beforehand. It also seems Fubuki has some memories from the world line Okabe was just in, supporting the fact that everyone has some sort of reading Steiner ability, just not as prominent and reliable as Okabe's. Later, Okabe is informed that Amadeus' takeover has been prevented. Later, Suzuha questions Okabe about him shifting world lines and reveals to him that the probable cause is America and Russia experimenting with time machines. Mr. Braun informs Okabe about an organization called Derpa, who are presumably trying to kidnap Amadeus in order to obtain Kurisu's time machine thesis. Mahu tells Okabe that she has Kurisu's laptop and Okabe frantically warns her that the data on it is what will cause World War III. We go to Daru's secret hacker lab, and Maho gets him to analyze the laptop. Okabe informs Maho about the truth of time machines, and warns her to never make one herself to save Kurisu. Almost immediately after warning Maho about the time machine, the three are surrounded by a mass group who demand the laptop. However, the conversation is quickly interrupted by another hostile group who destroys the laptop. Okabe, Daru, and Maho then flee the scene. Maho and Leskinen return to America and cut ties between Okabe and Amadeus. Kaguri almost gets hit by a truck and with a hard hit to the head, she regains her memories of Mayuri being her mother. Mayuri is informed about the future relationship between her and Kagari, but Okabe and Daru are still curious as to what transpired during the past 12 years of Kagari's life in the present, which she still doesn't remember by the way. Suzuha realizes her and Kagari's recollection of their separation 12 years ago differ, and Mr. Braun suggests a third party may have brainwashed Kagari. Okabe and Moka head off to the location where Kagari was found and discover a secret facility where Kagari was captive. We cut to Kagari walking to the lab until she's distracted by a song and disappears somewhere. A few months pass and Kagari is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Daru and Suzuha convince Maho to help them build the time leap machine. Suzuha is later attacked by a brainwashed Kagari. After the attack, Maho arrives back in Japan to help Daru and Suzuha with the time leap machine. Episode 15 is useless, but basically Daru gets with Yuki, Suzuha's future mom. Later, Okabe walks in on Daru and Maho trying to complete the time leap machine, leading him into a fit of rage. Maho and Daru argue with Okabe for a bit, Maho exclaiming Steins Gate must exist. Okabe leaves the lab and bumps into Mayuri, telling him she heard the argument which just transpired. She tells Okabe that she regrets convincing him not to save Kurisu back on that fateful day, and exclaims that she can see that he is suffering from his choice, and is not happy with the world line he's ended up on. Mayuri suggests to Suzuha that they use the time machine to go back and convince past Okabe to not give up on saving Kurisu. Maru tells Okabe that someone has accessed Amadeus, which holds Kurisu's knowledge of time machines. Suzuha receives a email from future Daru from 2025, informing her that they will make it to Steins Gate. Armed soldiers arrive to take the time machine, but Suzuha turns on her badassery and beats all the soldiers to a pulp. Kagari's inner hulk is activated and takes a fatal shot in the process. Leskinen reveals to Okabe that he is a member of Strat 4, and obtained information about the future from Kagari, who had been brainwashed by future Leskinen. Just before Leskinen takes the time machine, he is knocked out. Suzuha and Mayuri try to use the time machine, but as the machine dissipates, it is hit by a Derpa helicopter missile. Suzuha and Mayuri are dead and Okabe leaves the tragic scene, distraught and scared. Okabe, Maho and Daru work together to complete the time leap machine, leading to Okabe to time leap back before the tragic demise of Mayuri and Suzuha. Just like in the OG Steins Gate, Okabe tries to save Mayuri and Suzuha, but fails to do so. However, he is informed about Mayuri's plans to convince past Okabe not to give up on Kurisu. The time machine then gets blown to smithereens, and Okabe time leaps once again. Alright, this next bit's gonna get a bit weird, but here we go. Okabe attempts to time leap and wakes up in a room in the year 2036, where World War 3 has ensued. Daru, Suzuha, and the rest of the gang have created a resistance. Okabe joins Daru and the others, and Daru explains that the last time leap Okabe took did not go down correctly, consequentially missing the 48 hour time limit the time leap machine has. 
Daru continues saying that they tried to build another time machine. However, in the year 2025, Okabe was captured by Strat 4 and tortured so much that he fell into a coma for 11 years. Daru then upgraded the time loop machine and implants 2011 Okabe's memories into the comatose Okabe of 2036. Okabe proposes he use the time leap machine over and over again in order to return back to 2011 to fix all the catastrophic jazz which has just taken place. Using the time leap machine, Okabe begins to make his way back to 2011. So you know what it's time for. Upon reaching 2025, Okabe gets help from Amadeus to prevent being captured. Okabe finally arrives at 2011, and he continues his mission to try to save Mayuri and Tsuzaha and the destruction of the time machine. Each attempt ends in failure, and Okabe figures out that the Russians are able to acquire Kurisu's time travel thesis by stealing Amadeus' data, which holds the memories of Kurisu, which I feel like I've repeated so many times in this episode. But nevertheless, Amadeus proposes that she must be deleted so no one will be able to get their hands on the time travel thesis. However, the phone wave in which the gang usually send their D-mails through will be found out by CERN if used, leading to similar events which took place in the OG Steins Gate. At this point, Dara introduces his subpar version of D-mail, finishing a prototype of it during spring. Dara's D-mailing system, called d -Rhine, is able to send messages back into the past just like the phone wave could, however, it will not be detected by CERN. Dara estimates d -Rhine's limit to last New Year's Eve. The d rain is sent and the world line changes and Amadeus is erased. Alright, this next bit's gonna get a bit confusing, so I'll take it a bit slower here. Due to the world line shifting, Suzuha and Mayuri safely travel back in time. The two travel to the point in time where Okabe and Suzuha are traveling back in time in an attempt to save Kurisu. But of course, if you've watched the OG Steins Gate, you'll know the first attempt didn't go so well. Unable to land properly due to the risk of a paradox, Mayuri calls herself and encourages her to help Okabe push onwards to save Kurisu. And as we know, Mayuri does help Okabe try again, leading him to successfully save Kurisu. Suzuha is then forced to jump to a random era to avoid a time paradox, and they have no chance to use the time machine again because they've run out of fuel. However, to ensure Steins Gate is reached, in the year 2025, the Okabe we've been following throughout this entire season sends Okabe, from the OG Steins Gate, a video instructing him on how to save Kurisu. Thus, the Okabe from the OG Steins Gate reaches the Steins Gate world line. However, the Okabe we've been following does not. Kind of a bittersweet ending, I know. After sending the video message, 2025 Okabe heads off to find Mayuri and Suzuha, who've landed in 18,000 BC. Okabe arrives with his time machine to rescue Mayuri and Suzuha, and the three of them presumably time travel to another world line. So that's Steins Gate Zero in a nutshell. If I missed anything important, feel free to correct me in the comments below. Before I end the video though, I just want to let you know that I finally have a bunch of social medias. That includes Instagram, Twitter, and I even have a Discord server if you want to chat with me and some other awesome people. I also stream on Twitch, so if you want to see me scream and panic all while having fun playing video games, feel free to follow me over there as well. Anyways, thank you heaps for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one.